This is not a recipe video, this is just a video where I'm going to invite you to join me in the kitchen cooking a vegetarian filling for a stuffed flatbread. We're not really following any kind of formal recipe here, we're just going to take a bunch of really nice ingredients from all over the world, smash them together and make ourselves a delicious, highly nutritious and flavour packed meal. Okay, so today we're going to make a uh, filling for flatbreads. We're going to make a kind of burrito type filling, so it's going to be based on these crab side beans and lentils, but also all of these delicious vegetables. So we're going to start by roasting most of these vegetables. Later on, we will add some flavour in the form of tomato puree and these lovely foraged dried mushrooms. These are my homemade dried mushrooms that I've foraged in various places, out, including out in the new forest and locally. And yet we're going to make a flavour base though first using all these vegetables. So we've got fennel, a great big onion, garlic, tomatoes, peppers, carrots and celery. We're going to chop that all up, put it in a roasting pan, put some lovely extra virgin olive oil on there and a bit of salt and then roast that until it starts to caramelise and reduce down and all those flavours enhance and sweeten. So let's get all of that chopped up and into a roasting pan. Okay, magnificent great big sweet Spanish onion. And this is going to cook down and caramelise and give a lot of sweetness to the dish. So I'm, I need to think about the size of the pieces when they're cooked down. Because I don't really want to chop this again once it's roasted. So I am going to kind of dice it like that. About that sort of size. So that might seem like a lot of onion. But actually, it's going to cook down, become really sweet, and give us a whole bunch of flavour. And then we're just going to do the same with the other vegetables. I'm going to cut them to more or less the final size we want them. So while we're chopping these up, we'll get the oven switched on. And these carrots. Now these carrots, normally I would peel carrots, but these are quite clean. And I've given them a wash. And we'll just keep the skins on. I don't think it'll make very much difference once they're roasted. Now the carrots I am going to chop up into little batons. So course them first. And then we'll chop them into little pieces, a bit like that. Mm. So, fennel, wow, lovely sort of powerful aniseedy aroma. And chop that fairly small. And then, so our fennel goes in. Gonna kind of chunk those up. Okay, so that's the main bulk of those chopped vegetables, and we're just gonna break those up a little bit so they cook more evenly, especially those big chunks of onion. Just gonna snap them up a little bit like that. Okay. Nice old splash of olive oil. This is really nice, good quality, extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm going to give that another little toss in that oil. Just to make sure things are coated. Okay, tomatoes, I'm going to put them on just on the vine like that because that vine will add a little bit of flavour to the dish. And again, and also this garlic bulb, we're going to just roast it whole because I will take that apart later. So that's now going to go in the oven at about 200 degrees centigrade for probably an hour and a half or until everything starts to reduce down, caramelise and show a little bit of colour and enhance the flavour. So let's get that in the oven. Okay, so these vegetables have been in the oven about an hour now. Let's open them up. Let's have a look and see what's going on. 
So yeah, we've got some nice browning starting to happen on some of the pieces of vegetables, but still quite a lot of juice in the bottom there to evaporate. So what I'm gonna do, I think now, is we'll probably pull off these tomatoes off the stalk. That's good, they're just coming off in one piece. Just get rid of those stalks now. They have imparted as much flavour as they're going to, I think, to the mix. Now the thing is with tomato stems is tomato leaves are actually ever so ever so mildly toxic, but not nearly so much as potato leaves. And so you can actually use tomato leaves as a cooking spice. You'd have to eat a ton of them to, to actually have any kind of to experience any problems or poisoning. Tomato stems and leaves do have a flavour that we do associate with tasty tomatoes. Anyway, let's just give that all a mix because the ones at the edge are starting to burn a little bit too much. We'll give that a mix together. I think we've got a little way to go still because I want to drive off all that moisture and then have these things start to caramelise and brown a little bit. So we will put the garlic back in there. So back in the oven, I think, for at least another half hour, maybe another hour, and then hopefully we will have seen this start to reduce down into a sort of flavour paste that we can use for our bean casserole. Okay, so here we go. After two hours in the oven, everything has softened up and the colours have all darkened and we've got caramelisation going on on most of those vegetables. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let that all cool down. So we're just going to take all these roasted vegetables. Now they've cooled down. I'm just going to pack them in this bowl and we will use them tomorrow. But let's just have a quick look at that garlic. So these, this roasted garlic here, when I peel off all these papery bits, what we've got in there is juicy cloves of roasted garlic, which I'm just going to plonk in there with the rest of the vegetables and those are just delicious savoury flavour and they've lost a lot of their harshness a lot of the sort of fresh garlic has a bit of harshness to it but when it's been roasted like this it turns into something sweet and very very savoury so we'll just put that all aside in the fridge covered up until tomorrow and then tomorrow we will Assemble it in the slow cooker to make our bean casserole filling for our flatbreads. So yesterday we prepared these roast vegetables and in there we've got carrot, celery, fennel, tomatoes, uh, onions and garlic. And so that took, now it might seem like that took a long time to prepare, but actually the preparation time is just chopping up the vegetables. It was in the oven for two hours, but I was able to do something else with those two hours of my time, so it wasn't particularly time consuming for me. Anyway, so that's gonna go in the slow cooker. So that's our flavor base. And there's a whole bulb of roast garlic in there, which is gonna give us some really powerful and punchy flavor. Next, I've got my beans. Now I was gonna use a mixture of black beans and crab eye beans, and I've just decided to go for just the crab eye beans instead because sometimes the back beans actually discolour the casserole and so I decided I wanted something that was a bit more colourful. So these have been soaking overnight, that was about half that volume when I put it in last night and covered it with water so it's about, I don't know, three quarters of a pint of beans and covered with water. So I'm just going to drain those. Now they are soaked but they're still quite hard and they need cooking. Now you might be wondering why am I, no why am I not just using a can of beans here? Well. If I was to use canned beans, they would already be cooked, and so this you could make this dish a lot quicker that way, but these would not require cooking. And what I want to do here is I want to cook some flavour into these beans. I've got about a cupful of green lentils and about three quarters of a cupful of pearled spelt. Now this is a wheat-like grain that's been pearled in a nutrition mill, a bit like pearl barley, but made of a a wheat-like grain called spelt. 
Now, let's have some more flavours. So my wild mushrooms, my dried wild mushrooms. I put about a good handful of these dried mushrooms into water overnight. And this is what I've got back from it. So let's just strain that into the other jug. And we'll see what we've got. So I've got reconstituted mushrooms, which we will use. But look at this. Look at that mushroom stock. And it just smells incredibly mushroomy and foresty, which is great. It smells really, really wild mushroom, earthy, nutty sort of flavor. So I'm going to carefully tip that into here. And I say carefully because I'm not going to tip out the very last little bit because occasionally there's just a little bit of sand in there. So just going to throw that away. The mushrooms themselves we will chop up and put in there in a minute. So I've got these stock cubes. These are Hungarian. They're made for, um, designed for sort of pork casserole type of thing, but they've got a really dominant tomato and paprika flavor, which is exactly what I want. They are vegetarian friendly. They've not got any actual meat stock in them. So I'm going to make up one of these stock cubes. Look how red that is. That's like paprika and onion and vegetable stock. So I'm just going to make up one of these stock cubes with about a pint of water, of hot water. And we'll just let that dissolve into there. Meanwhile, I've got a can of tomatoes. These are just chopped plum tomatoes. And those go straight in. Now I've got a little trick here. I'm just going to take a little bit of that water and just swill it around the can so we don't waste any of these tomatoes. I've got a little tin of concentrated tomato puree. And that's all going to go into the slow cooker. So this is all flavour that's going to cook into these beans. And there are quite a lot of beans and pulses in here, so it might seem like I'm adding a lot of bits and pieces, but actually it's going to be fine. There's a lot of material in here to soak up that flavour. And again, just added a little bit of hot water from that jug into the can here so we don't waste any of this lovely flavour of these tomatoes. So, yeah, that would have gone to waste that little bit there without doing that rinse. Let's have a look and see how our stock is doing. That stock cube is pretty much dissolved now. So that's going to go in as well. And now we're at the point where we can actually give it a little stir because there is sufficient liquid to immerse all of the ingredients. So what else is going to go in there? So we're going to have a little bit of cinnamon, just a pinch. A little bit of star anise in powder form. Again, just a little pinch. We've got the fennel flavor in there as well, so that will just enhance that fennel flavor. We've got just dried mixed herbs. This is thyme, rosemary, sage, parsley. And I'm gonna put a big teaspoon and a half of those dried mixed herbs in there. And now something a little bit special. These are my pickled walnuts that I made last year. And we're just going to put a couple of those in there, chopped up. Now pickled walnuts, you can buy them. And if I was not making a vegetarian dish here, I possibly would add a dash of Worcestershire sauce. But obviously Worcestershire sauce is made from fish, and we are aiming for a vegetarian feast today. No particular reason for that, just other than that we can, and it's interesting to try. But pickled walnuts, I've got a very similar flavour profile to Worcestershire sauce, and so as a flavour boost to a casserole like this, they work very well as a substitute for Worcester. And then we've got these mushrooms. And let's have a look at these mushrooms. I'm just going to squeeze them out 
to make them a bit more manageable. Just going to squeeze out the rest of the liquid out of them. Good. And we won't throw that away. So in here we've got a mixture of seps, uh, horse mushrooms, trumpet chanterelles, yellow chanterelles, oyster mushrooms, a whole bunch of things that I foraged and then dried last year. And I'm just going to chop these up quite finely because the texture of reconstituted dried mushrooms is less important than the flavour. Often when they're reconstituted they're a little bit rubbery and soft but it's all about the flavour. So these will continue to release mushroomy flavour into that casserole as it cooks. So there we go, that's our reconstituted dried mushrooms as well. And then finally, I've got some nori sheets, some little bits of dried seaweed. I'm just gonna crumble those up. It's a bit of an unusual flavour. We are really going all, all over the place in terms of sourcing flavours for this. This is not a nod to any particular nationality or ethnicity. We're just going to go all over the world to get the flavours that we really enjoy. So I think that's probably enough in there. Let's give that a stir to get those dry ingredients infused through. So That looks pretty good. It may need a little bit more liquid during the day, but I'm just going to turn that on now. Oh, actually, last little thing. Just that last little bit of juice that came out of the mushrooms. Again, we'll tip that in, but not the last little bit in case it's got sand. So, lid on, and we will slow cook that for probably six to eight hours. We'll come back and have a look and see what that's like later in the day. Okay, so this has been cooking most of the day. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Oh, camera steamed up a little bit. Let's just wait for that to clear. Okay, let's have a look and see what we got. So, all of those lentils and that wheat and beans have soaked up all of that flavor. Now, one other ingredient I did put in there from my cupboard was I put about a teaspoonful of smoked paprika in there as well. So that's what we've got there now. Look at that. It's thick and delicious. I'm just gonna, just gonna grab a spoon and have a little taste of that. So get a couple of beans and a bit of vegetables. Let's have a look at that. So there we go. Let's have a little taste. It's gonna be very, very hot. And so those beans are soft and delicious and they've soaked up those tomato and vegetable flavors and the smoky paprika mm, everything has really really come together nicely there and look at look how much that's made so that must have been about five pounds worth of ingredients and yet it's made enough there for about 20 portions at least i would say so what we'll do with this some of it we will have in these stuffed flatbreads some of it I will save and maybe I'll add a little bit of chili to it and we'll have it with some rice. And then maybe we can have some of it with some pasta later on or we can actually add a little bit of more stock to it and make it into a soup. So we've got, what we've got here is a base from which we can actually make a whole bunch of different recipes. And this is all vegetarian, although you could put meat in here, but I haven't. So this is like a vegetarian protein stew base that we can use to make all sorts of things. Anyway, let's get on and stuff those flatbreads. Okay, so we've got the big old flatbreads here. Let's put together a stuffed flatbread made out of these ingredients. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got some vegetables here. I've got some nice, this is shredded Chinese cabbage actually. So just fancied something a bit crisp. I've got some spring onion and some red pepper. I'm just gonna put that in there. We'll put the onion on in a minute. I'm actually gonna use some of this yogurt. Let's have a little taste of it first. So this is the, I think it's like a, it's similar to the Kayamakli 
yogurt that I've bought before. It's a really, really creamy yogurt. Let's have a taste. Mm, gosh. That's really rich and creamy. So just a little bit of that, not too much, I think. We'll just have that along that side. Next, we're going to have a good helping of this bean casserole filling. I'll put that in the middle there. Just some cheddar cheese. Just going to grate on some nice mature cheddar. And then we'll just have our spring onions. And now, just a little bit of hot sauce. This is just a like a sriracha type of hot sauce. Let's have a look at that. Is that going to be about the right amount of filling? I think we might go for just a little bit more of this bean filling. Okay. So, going to wrap that up. Wow. That is one full bread. It's going to be too big to be manageable. As is. Let's have a look at that. So there we go. Look at that. And, well, let's get stuck in have a bite. Mm. Mm. That is really superb. The hot chili creamy yogurt, the cheese, the beans, the crispness of the vegetables, all of those flavours that we put into that casserole have just mellowed and worked together. It's just incredible. It's really good. So there we go. That's not so much a recipe video as more of a just a join me in the kitchen type of video. That's how I made a substantial and tasty vegetarian bean filling for these flatbreads. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.